NBA player Enos Kanter, the Boston Celtics, slamming China for the second time in the past few days. In a Twitter video, he goes after its use of slave labor. Uh, he goes after the abuse toward Tibet. And he takes on Nike and indirectly the NBA for refusing to speak out against it. When it comes to China, Nike remains silent. You do not address police brutality in China. You do not speak about discrimination against the LGBTQ community. You do not say a word about the oppression of minorities in China. Right, this guy's shown a lot of guts. Clay Travis joins us now, founder of Outkick.com. And Clay, good morning to you. Cantor was born in Switzerland. Uh, his nationality is Turkish. Um, can he exact change from the Chinese Communist government, from Nike, from well, the NBA? Great morning to you guys. I hope everything is going well. And I love what Enos Cantor is doing. Not only is he a Turkish national, I think this is important, Bill and Dana. His family has felt the hard hand of oppression in their country. They've been imprisoned. Enos Cantor himself is not allowed to return to Turkey without facing imprisonment himself for being outspoken against the leadership of that country. And one of the things that is the biggest flaw, I would say, of what we should maybe refer to as woke capitalism in this country is it doesn't look outside of the United States borders for far more egregious violations of human rights. And what Enos Kanter is doing is pointing out the blatant hypocrisy of companies like Nike, but also, look, of Apple, of, uh, of Amazon, of all different sorts of companies that are large and influential in this country, Apple for sure, and have major and substantial interest in China and do not hold China to the same standards that they claim to hold people in the United States and companies in the United States too. And so the NBA's rank hypocrisy here when it has come to ripping America to shreds while shutting up and dribbling for Chairman Z and everyone in China has been ripe to be exploited here. I give credit to Enos Cantor for succinctly, cogently, and intelligently ripping that dichotomy, that hypocrisy, and I hope others in the NBA will join him in speaking out against China. And the bigger picture here, guys, remember, we're evidently as a country just going to show up in Beijing in February for the Winter Olympics yep. and pretend that the last year and a half hasn't even mm -hmm. happened, that China yeah. didn't lie about COVID, that they haven't taken over Hong Kong, that they aren't threatening to take over Taiwan. Are we really just going to show mm -hmm. up and make nice with China and be there for the Winter Olympics? Clay, I think it's shameful. Not just we. And I think this could be built not upon just here. we. There could be 150 countries to show up there. One more thing here. Yeah, When, when he wore right. the sneakers a week ago, China pulled the feed. Go yeah. ahead. Jim. I'm just wondering, does he get any? Yes. Um, does he get any pressure from other players or even the NBA itself, even if they do it quietly, to try to get him to stop? I'm sure, Dana. I'm sure there will be some quiet pressure. Now, it's worth pointing out, and I just want to keep hammering this because I think it's one of the great untold stories in sports right now. There are many NBA players currently on the court with Chinese sneaker deals. When there was mm -hmm. a conflict about Uyghur cotton, uh, that is the Muslim minority in Xinjiang province. Guys, China came out and said, not only are we going to continue with these slave labor camps, the Chinese sneaker companies came out and bragged that their shoes were made with Chinese slave labor to pick cotton, and NBA players are endorsing and wearing those sneakers on the court in NBA wow. games right now. The fact that most in the media are ignoring this is a form of rank hypocrisy, and it needs to be discussed, debated, and it needs to change, quite frankly. Really fa fascinating issue here. Uh, we're watching from afar, and keep an eye on it too, Clay. And you're right about February when the world descends upon Beijing. Uh, what a story that will be. Nice to see you, Clay. Great to Thanks see you, too.